Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to use a game resource pack to design a maze game from scratch. We will start from a blank world, conceive the game's pace conditions, and then add some decorations, click play, and you can run it. You can also design multiple task levels so that your players can enjoy playing endlessly. Before that, we have another video, which is a basic introduction to the game resource pack modular dungeon 2 that we are going to use. And if you haven't watched it, I suggest you watch it first. If you are familiar with it, great, let's get started. After opening the modular Dungeon 2 resource pack, we will enter the overview map level by default. This shows all the resources we will use, but we won't touch any of the components here. We will create a new map level. Click the file menu in the upper left corner and select new level. In this pop-up box, we select Basic, then click Create. This is a basic blank world, and Unreal Engine has done some basic settings, such as lighting, default player, and ground, etc. We will start from here. Let me change the layout a bit. I don't need this column on the left. To make it clear, the column below needs a bit larger, so it won't be blocked by the subtitles of this video. Now, I don't need this ground either. Click the Delete key on the keyboard and delete it directly. In the content browser, we go to the Modular Dungeon 2 Blueprint folder. We need everything here to design the level. First, drag a floor, place it anywhere on the screen, and then click here. You can reset this place to the initial position. The size of this floor is 3 mm 3 maler, which can just accommodate a player standing on it. Because this floor has a thickness of 1 to me, we need to move the player's spawn point to a higher position. When we arrange the floor components, we can set the snap here to 50 or 100 so that it will be easier to align the floor. At this time, you can directly click the play button above to run the game. Wow, it seems to be standing on a floating island, nowhere to go. Well, we need to expand this ground. We want to copy more pieces of the floor along the x-axis direction, which is the direction of this red axis arrow. Mouse over the arrow, it turns yellow, and we need to hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and then drag the mouse with the left button. The floor is copied out. Continue this operation. You can change the snapping here, but I think 50 is fine. You can also select multiple at the same time, which will be more efficient. Click play again. This time, we can have a sprint. Okay, it's time to think about what we are going to do next. Well, let's start with the simplest layout. How simple is it? The player runs from one end to the other, then wins, and can enter the next level. Too simple, right? Don't worry, Rome wasn't built in a day, and behind any complex thing, there is a simple logic. Our game is no exception. First of all, we need to make a mark to remind ourselves and the players. I set the floor at the end point to circle, meaning there is something here. The starting point is also set to circle. Now, it looks more obvious. Our players will go from one circle to another circle. Remember to save your level in case the computer crashes suddenly. Save the level in the Maps folder. Do not overwrite the default map. There are some demo maps I made here. Give your map a new name. Save, that's it. Now, we can put the controller on. We want to place this next level controller at the endpoint. Drag it to the center of the circle. They fit together perfectly. In the controller's property bar, enter the target level you want to jump to. For example, the demo L1 level. Okay, let's test it. A circular spawn point looks good. Run forward. Stepped on the end point. Wow, we passed the level and entered the next level. 
press the ESC key to return to the initial position. But we can't let the player run to the endpoint so easily, right? Well, we can set a branch intersection here to confuse the player. You can go a little more in this direction. The other direction can also go. At this end, I'm going to put something. The other end also needs to put something. The most direct way is to add a door to block the player's way. We can set the angle snap value to 45 degrees, which will make it easier to rotate the components. Okay, now my idea is to put a switch at the end of one of these two branches. Step on the switch and then open the door to the end point. Just put it here. Add a control object to this switch. If you are not familiar with how to use this switch, I suggest you watch our other video. Okay, let's test it again. Run forward. Look left and right. There is a button on the left. Step on it. The door opened. You can go in. Very good. But it's still a bit simple, right? Then add some interference items. Add another intersection. I want to decorate this intersection above as a confusing crossroad. Where the player stands and doesn't know which door is the right one. The new intersection doesn't need a door but it needs to turn a little. There is also a controller here, which can open other doors. This controller controls this door, This controller controls another door. Now let's test it again. At the first intersection, you may see some interference items. Continue forward. There are three identical doors here. They can all be closed. What should I do? It seems that I have to go back first. There is a road here, or go to the other side first. Step on this. Aha, a door opened. Go in and see nothing. Go and find it again. I've been here. Oh, there is another button here. This door also opened. Step on this button. The last door also opened. This button looks a bit special. Step on it. Yeah, passed. I am winner. Okay, now our gameplay process is temporarily completed. Next, we need to make the whole scene more complete. For example, walls are necessary. This scene is relatively small. There are many turns, so this corner wall is very useful. I will speed up this video. You can see how I arrange these corner walls. Now we add straight walls. Pay attention, we can control whether there are pillars at both ends of the straight wall. The pillars can shield the wall seams.
Okay, now the walls are all arranged. Come again. Now that there are walls, it feels a bit different. I want to add an obvious door and switch here. When the player comes here, he will see this door directly, and he will step on it without thinking, and then see the door open. This process naturally completes the initial teaching. The player will know, oh, there is a door, step on the switch and the door will open. At the same time, there are branches on both sides which will be temporarily ignored by the player. When there is no way to go, he will think of going back. Finally, we also need to add some decorations to the scene so that the scene does not look so dull. This important intersection, we can make the corner less hard. At this time, pay attention. The chamfer exposes the blank below, and we need to add some floor tiles. Okay, add some decorations. It is worth mentioning that decorations can not only increase the atmosphere, but also attract the player's attention and let the player go straight in a certain direction. It can also make it easier for players to remember a certain location. Okay, try it again. There is a door in front, go and see. It seems to have stepped on something. The door opened, hurry up. There is a basin in the middle surrounded by several doors, but they are all closed. It seems that they can't get in. It seems that they should find a way to open them. Aha, uh -huh. there is a road here, and there are a lot of things here. It seems that they should search here. There is a button behind, jump over. Go back and see. Sure enough, a door opened, but nothing. Go and find it again. I've been here. Oh, there is another button here. This door also opened. Step on this button. The last door also opened. This button looks a bit special. Step on it. Oh yeah, passed. I am winner. Now, let's go back to the blueprint folder and see what other components we can use. Hmm, it looks like there are still many unused ones. Well, let's start by building a floor. Adjust the snap value, copy this floor, and make it a default floor. Then copy, copy, and copy. Hmm. We can make this area sink and create some interesting height difference terrain. Like a sunken plaza. 
Add steps around it. We copy these steps. Make them in two styles. Hmm, I can also make two special platforms here. Put two pillars here, like a palace. Add some lights, it will be more interesting. This pillar needs to turn a direction. Turn on the flame. The effect is good. Let's turn it off first, to save some resources. Change to wooden pillars. They look more matching. We can make a decoration to wrap the soil around this floor. <laughs> We can also add a red carpet in the middle. Add some ground damage effects. I also want to place some furniture. First, make a small area so that we can arrange our furniture. These two walls, we can change them to walls with bookshelves. Add a pillar in the middle. Very good. Put some bookshelves here as a small library. Assuming this is a secret room, we need a mechanism to open this hidden door. Very good. Let's let the player come over and take a look. We need to find a way here and add a road to get here. We didn't lay the floor according to the 3-meter modulus just now, so it's not aligned here. Let's ignore it for now. Okay, let's start. Here, it seems to be a left turn. Jump a bit. There is a gap. Okay, we come to this sunken plaza. Open the door. Wow, there is a secret room, hiding a lot of precious books. Okay, let's add some more things. Okay, we have added enough decorations. This wall can be changed to a window. Very good. Let's try again. I should be able to jump in from the window. Wow, I did it. But it seems a little bit small. I remember another female character can jump into this window. If you're interested, you can try it yourself. Well, forget it. Very good. Now let me take you through and explain the design of my demo levels. In the Maps folder, there are Demo L1, Demo L2, and Demo L3, three levels. The first level is the entry level. The idea is similar to what I just talked about. The player will start from here, reach here to end, In the beginning, you will encounter a bridge made of broken planks. At this time, the player may panic and forget to explore the two sides. 
the most important thing is that there is a button here. So the player continues to move forward and arrives at this small hall. Then he needs to come back and find this button. Come back here and find the door that opens the endpoint. Let's start. An initial hall. Go forward, carefully cross this wooden bridge. There are three doors here, none of them can be opened. Go back and find something. Found it, step on it. One door opened. And there is also a button here. Jump. Another door opened. Come in. There is also a button here. Step on it. Okay, the last door. Oh yeah, the pass button. Ah, uh -huh. a new level. Let's open the second level and take a general look. This is the player's spawn point, a very large hall. After coming out of here, you will directly enter a palace. There are doors on both sides of the palace, and also a door in front. After entering this door, there will be a button, which actually controls one of the side doors. After entering this door, there will be a button at the end, which controls the side door here. After we go down from this passage, we will really reach the end point. Okay, let's start. Go forward and open the first door. Arrived at the palace and saw a door. Saw the doors on both sides. There is a passage here. Go in and take a look. Nothing. Go to the other side and see. Found a button. Go back to the palace and see. A door opened. Found it, step on the button, go back to the palace. Enter this open door. Well, no button. The other side. Here. Aha. Go back to the palace. It seems that we should enter this door. There seems to be nothing here. Keep going.
Aha, saw the endpoint, step on it, passed. Okay, now we have come to the last level. Let's take a general look first. The lower left corner here is the player's spawn point. After coming out of here, you can quickly enter the palace. This palace looks like it has a lot of mechanisms. At the back of the palace, there is a switch that can control some floor bricks in the palace. After going down from below the floor, we can reach the real endpoint. To enter the back of the palace, you need to open these two hidden doors. One of the hidden door switches is on this side of the branch. The other hidden door switch is on another branch. As long as you can find any one of the buttons on both sides, you can open one of the hidden doors and enter the back of the hall. Okay, let's start. Because I knew the route, I ran directly into the hall. If you are a new player, you may first enter other branches. But it doesn't matter, because even if we got here first, we still have to look for other routes. Now let's enter one of the branches. Found a button. But unfortunately, this button just opened a side door and didn't do much. Keep looking. This looks like a secret door. Look around here. Found a button here. Go back and see. Ah hey, sure enough, the door opened. This button should be a more important one. Now let's go back to the hall and see. Sure enough, the door to the back hall opened. But we won't go in now. I want to show you what we have on another branch first. Go down from here, it's another road. There is an obvious button here. Step on it. The button just controlled this door. It's already opened. A dark underground passage. Look carefully. There seems to be something here. Yes, a button. The door opens and you can go out. A small hall? It looks like there should be something. Look for it. Sure enough, a button. This is a secret door. Opened. Another button? Step on it. There is a door here, next to the button. The door opened. Now we can see that both doors on this side are opened. Let's go in. Step on it. Go out and see. This floor seems to have been lifted, and there are stairs below. Wait, what happened? Why did it close again? What to do? Go back and step on it again.
Yes, it's here. What's wrong? It closed again. It seems to have a time limit. Well, go back and step on it again. Run, let me in. Puff, just right, I came in. The floor above is also closed. There is another door here. It doesn't seem difficult. Go in. Aha! Passed. Now we have been teleported back to the first level. But anyway, we have completed all the demo levels. I will continue to launch more levels in the future, and I hope you can use this resource pack to create more creativity. Have fun! Thank you for watching. See you later.